It's been described as a religion or a winter madness that grips a city. To most, it's the greatest game on earth. But the VFL season 1981 has come to an end and it's time to sit back and reflect. Time to remember the magnificent highlights, the achievements and the failures. It was another year of record crowds and expansions. Games were played in Sydney and Brisbane and Victorian teams flew to Perth by light plane and to Hobart. We saw the umpire strike, the introduction of trial matches on Sundays and South Melbourne prepare to move to Sydney. We farewell champions in Alex Jesselenko, Francis Burke and Don Scott and marvelled as Richmond's Kevin Bartlett became the first player to reach 350 games. It was a season that saw news break on and off the field. Footscray's Kelvin Templeton became the first key forward to win the Brownlow Medal in 1980 and the club had pinned its hopes for 1981 on him. With seconds to go in the Escort Championship match against Melbourne in March, he fell to the ground with a badly injured knee and was destined to miss much of the season. It appears that uh, I have a, a torn medial ligament, which will have to be corrected by surgery, uh, which will be done tomorrow night. Um, at this stage, it doesn't appear that there is other ligament damage, but this won't be able to be uh, known for sure until the operation tomorrow night. In the opening round, it was to be 1979 Premier's Carlton against the reigning Premier's Richmond on a neutral ground at VFL Park. Carlton won by 62 points and uncovered a star in the making in West Australian Peter Bazasto. Long kick by Fitzpatrick up towards full forward. The spook is there, knocked away by Bazasto to McClure. Goal! That was Bazasto's goal. Plenty of Richmond players there. Bazasto's got it, goes for short kick towards McClure, and it's a goal again. Well, that's the one Carlton needed. Well, that was an intelligent kick. I reckon he's a sensation, this guy, Peter. I'm not kidding. Well, a great taboo, let's say that. If you can get clear of that guy, Francis Burke, you're not doing too bad. In it goes for the short pass. Essendon lost to Geelong by a kick, but had a winner at another West Australian recruit, Tony Bahaja. It could be a beautiful shot from Bahaja, and it is full Nagel now, right down towards the central position. Bahaja coming across a courageous mark by Bahaja. Running the wrong way, it's Buzz and Foles racing out. Uh, there won't be a goal from it. But it's Off the field, the, the 1980 recruit of the year, Frank Marcazzani, stunned Fitzroy by asking for a clearance. He was to stand out for most of the season. They haven't treated us very well over the last six or seven months, and uh, you know I'm not going to play there again, as in far what, as I'm concerned. In what way aren't you happy with the treatment? Has it been a personal thing? Yeah, mostly personal, and uh, you know just. I haven't got on down there at all the last last year or so. They made certain promises last year, which um, to my uncle, he sort of got us down to Fitzroy last year and uh, they made promises to him and which weren't kept last year. I was a bit disappointed with that as well. That didn't worry me too much because I had a fairly, you know, fairly good year and I thought maybe you know, I'd do a little better this year with money-wise and that, but um, you know, they haven't come to the terms. Essendon and the new coach Kevin Sheedy won its first game for the season in a tense clash at Windy Hill against North. The Roos looked at new coach Malcolm Blight and weren't often let down. Little short kick over the top. Here's a chance for Malcolm Blight. Off the ground, beautiful soccer tactics and Blight puts it through for his third. Jump there towards the full forward position, the pack fly. A go for Malcolm Blight, a goal. Four goals. But he pushes it right down deep. At Moravan, it was a heart stopper and captain coach Alex Jesselenko had put St Kilda in a good position against Geelong. The margin, three points favouring Geelong. We have just entered time on. The drop punt from coach Jesselenko. And there's not a lot of crowd noise. Half-back flank. Cunningham! A big mark by Cunningham on half foot. He'll play on. Well, they're in trouble here. And there's the kick by Nettlefold. He'll land this in the square, or is it through? Big ball Out of the back. Could be a goal. Up bars played the push, I think. What's the happen there? Yeah. And he's got the chance to put St Kilda in front. The drop part. Oh! He's hooked that across his body for a behind. That could have been their chance at Kilda. Geelong by two points. At the MCG, meanwhile, Richmond had unfurled its 1980 pennant and had to hold off a stubborn fight back from the Bombers. It's got tremendous atmosphere and only lost one knockout today. Gets it to Waitman again. Waitman in trouble. He's down. Here's a chance for a Sarah goal or hand pass over to Waitman. 20 metres out from goal and finally to put it through for a badly needed one for the Tigers. Reigns is there. Should mark. Oh, ran into his own man. Flat and uh, let's see who. Wall, I think. Wall or landing, one or the other. I think it's Wall. And a 
good mark there to land. He's not paying the mark. I thought he would have paid that as it Pohaja gets it out to Terry Danaher. Scoots around his opponent, fires for the goals. A beautiful shot. However, it's not how many free kicks you get, it's where you get them. Nagel at the right half forward flank. Oh, Lee's bowled over. Eston player, who is that? Bowed, he's back. Oh, in the meantime, he's kicked through. It's a goal. It's a goal. Will it bounce? It bounce the wrong way. Back towards Tempany. Gets a kick. Oh, he's put through. What a goal by Tempany. No, it's a point. It's a point. He's running over the umpire. He reckons it was a goal. I do too. What happened there? He must have touched it. Corbett in front, mount behind. Out of bounds. Or is it still in? No, it's still in play. Wakeman, well shepherded by Clark. He'll put the Tigers in front. Shoots a goal and has put it through for four points. Directly and finally, the Phil Carman needed to kick this to give Essendon victory. One, the bowlers could say they just about won this match. Yeah. Oh, he's missed it, I think. But for Abbott in the third round, Peter Dacos of Collingwood moved to the top of the goal-kicking list with six goals against the Saints. Gets a bad bounce and it lets uh, Collingwood in again as the handball goes across to Barham. He bounces his way through half forward, has a look at the goals, kicks in towards goal and puts it straight through the middle for another one. Morris, well spoiled however. Oh, Dacos is lurking, has a bounce towards half forward, can go short in towards full forward. Still going is Ricky Barham. Steady, sets up the handball towards Dacos. He's got to sit and wait for it. He's caught. Play's allowed to go on. Into the open goal goes Hanabry. And there's a steadying goal. The whistle has sounded once again. And this was to be the longest goal for years. St Kilda's Jeff Ferring. There's a booming torpedo kick from Ferring to full forward. Goal! What a goal! North Melbourne agreed to switch its home match against Richmond to VFL Park. And nearly 50,000 saw the Tigers win by 29 points. The stars were Kevin Bartlett and Michael Roach. He's skinny, he's little, and he's old, and he still kicked three goals. Plenty of distance further than Dempsey thought, but he still got his hands to the ball. Roach spins around well, racing for the ball is Henderson, and it bounces! His fourth, well, lots of fortune. <laughs> Top out to uh, excite. Melbourne Zach rover Tony Olshaw crashed oh, to the ground sorry. against St Kilda and the Demons went down by 52 points. He's hit and, and he's down. Does it in? The quick hand pass to Dunn. St Kilda going forward again as Jeff Dunn puts the short kick in. The bounce oh. over the head there. Tapped by across there to Roberts and he brings up his second. Quazzle, Satori gives a hand pass across to Thomas. He handballs it forward, goes after it again. Chance of a score coming up as the long kick from Thomas. Wonderful football. Eventually it's Roy captain Gary Wilson was felled by South Brownlow medalist Graham Teasdale. And the big swan Ruckman was to earn a five-match suspension as a result. I think the report book might be out too, well, There's plenty of heat down there at the moment. Uh, there was certainly one very unnecessary action. Left foot kicked straight down the ground. Hawthorne's Buster Colin Robertson to... produced Robertson one of the outstanding individual the performances of the year. Well, a, a polished and perfect game against North right Melbourne down. led to a 35-point win for the Hawks. With Robertson again. Dempsey can't get into the flight of it. Goss there looking for the ball, can't pick it up. Robertson again. Yes, it's through. Another goal. Great play by Robertson. Scoring corridor. Ball punched away from the big pack. Here's Robertson again. Open goal, and Robertson pops it through for his second goal. He got the little kick toward Tuck. Tuck's hand pass comes in, and Robertson can hand pass again to Goss. That he does. Goss, the goals are open, and it's a goal coming up to Norby Goss. Three Robertson once again. The root strength of Essendon tough man Ron Andrews resulted in some fiery scenes when the Bombers literally took on Fitzroy. While Essendon appeared to get the best in the physical encounters, it was the superb play of Fitzroy that sent the Lions home victorious. Or Mugovan down again. And in fact, that'll go the other way, and it should be in a Fitzroy free kick. Kick smothered at centre half forward, trying to burst his way through. Oh, and there was one that went in. A little short left to the ribs by. Uh, Glenn Hawker. Mr. Crossan does just that. Phil Carman from centre wing 
comes back about 30 yards. What a shocking kick by Carmen. Finds Margaret. <laughs> what shady. It's almost pull him off, I think, after that. There's a the ball kicked down into the forward line. Here's a chance now as Conlon lines up the goals from 35 metres out. He's swinging it back. It's true, I think. A beautiful goal by Conlon. With the drop punt, it's One of the crunches of the year. Teammates oh, Terry Smith and Jimmy line. Jess. Over the back for Richmond was Terry Smith. Constant runs at the But the ball. magnificent it's recovery by Jess, down yes, for the count, and then back right with a great goal, and the Tigers on the way to a 28-point win over Geelong. The coach Tony Jewell thinks it didn't look so bright when he flew with the Victorian team to Perth in a light plane the next day. an impressive debut for Tony Jewell in the state coaching role, and one he'll quickly want to forget. His leg weary band of charges were taken by surprise after the bounce down and encountered one of the most tenacious and hard-tackling West Australian sides seen for a long time. The big V recovered with the use of the wind but seemed to tire towards the end of the game, perhaps a legacy of their 12-hour flight across the Nullarbor. But when we spoke to Tony Jewell today, he offered no excuses. I mean, we had players out, so did uh, Western Australia. Um, I don't think there's any excuses at all. We were just uh, beaten by a better side in the day. Back into attack by Collingwood up there. The first grand Stewart. final preview of the year came in the sixth round, and Collingwood blitzed the previously undefeated Carlton with an inspired burst of 11 straight goals. The danger man this day was Peter Dacos with seven superb goals. Another one. Hand pass. Dacos. Goal. Right hand ball. Up the centre half forward. Off the pack is Dacos, lining them up again, fires, goal. it's another goal. Goal number six. Goal number six to Dacos, and so he should jump up there. Bromberg's in there. After a protracted battle, South lured VFA star Stephen Allender from Port Melbourne, and his impressive debut against St Kilda was one of the brighter notes in a fairly dull year for the Swans. Smith now from the members' wing down towards Allender again, used his body nicely, got a hand to the ball, good hand pass to a teammate going past, excellent play by Stephen Allender. Stephen Wright it is, who's lining up from a tight angle, and he's put it through. For Paul Moore, that is, as he breaks away towards centre-half forward, looking there for Allender, Allender back back, can he take the mark? He does, a good mark by Allender. On that centre-half forward area, looking to play on quickly, and so looking to play, out there looking for his uh, captain, over the top is Allender, takes a beautiful mark. Magnificent mark, Stephen Elder. Position leading in the race. For St Kilda's Simon Meehan, the lights went out when he clashed with South's Rod Carter. Badly down. That was Rod Carter. Footscray recorded its first win for 1981 when it defeated a disappointing Essendon by eight points. The Bulldogs came back from a ten-point deficit at the last change and with Dunstan, Sait and Wheeler in command, ran out victorious in a thriller. With Bernie Quinlan running right, Fitzroy snatched the game against Richmond by a kick and moved into the five under new coach Robert Wall. Quinlan will snap it. Goal. It looks a good shot. My word, it's a good shot. A good goal. Kick by Bernie Quinlan down towards Rendell, who would be favourite here. Can't take the mark. Quinlan at the back. Can't pick up clearly. He's got it now. The left foot snap toward goal. What is it? It's close. It's a goal. Quinlan kicks his fourth goal. <laughs> the further these guys a gawky big fellow kick. named Leo Makes King made his debut for the Cats in season 1981. So what a game he played against Hawthorne. Some magnificent There's marks and three timely goals helped Geelong to its fourth right win of the, the season middle. in a low-scoring affair. Geelong deep into attack, a beautiful kick from him. Up towards full side, that's a good guy. He's built like a bean pole, and King, 15 metres out directly in front, has a chance to put Geelong within four points taking plenty of time, lining them up directly in front. Leo King. All six foot of 17 of him. Fires, that's a goal. Geelong within four points. Horn comes back to long way towards Yates. Yates high towards half forward, looking for the big guy. And King taking about, uh, well, that's his fifth mark for the day. And they should be able to go on from there, kicking with the breeze. Go very close. To go. When 79,326 people jammed in a VFL park for the match between Collingwood and Essendon on May the 16th, facilities at the giant complex were stretched to record lengths. Essendon gave supporters a preview of the season to come with a magnificent display on the huge ground and had a brilliant and inspiring leader in Simon Madden. Simon Madden, they're running right at the moment. 
Nagel a bounce over centre. Has all the time in the world to look up forward. The big fella Madden. Oh, he taps it down beautifully from Fowler. Fowler sets up the handball. Another one. They go in towards the open goal. This is useless. Goal. In towards half forward. Little Bahaja giving away two foot six there. Madden the handball to Reed. Reed steadies onto the left boot. He goes straight through the middle and another one to Essendon. Madden is the danger man. Great leap. He's paid it. Anaher's waiting down, but he's got folds there for support if needed. He doesn't. Has a couple of bounces over centre. The kick's beautifully smothered, but there's Essendon players everywhere. Folds has followed the play down. Kicks long now. Madden from behind. Oh! Collingwood's 57-point loss was to be its first for the season. The kick in towards goal. I think he's kept it off. Great play, Simon Madden. <laughs> Richmond recorded a massive eight-goal win against Footscray, but the most impressive sight was surely Mark Lee in full flight. St Kilda's Trevor Barker had a superb year, which was to be reflected in the Brownlow Cup, but against North, he ran into Ross Glendinning. And this was one of the goals of the year by North's Malcolm Blight. To St Kilda, though, the 17-goal loss preceded one of the stormiest weeks in the club's history as it embarked upon a bitter campaign to keep Doug Cox. Sandy Roberts spoke to Saints President Lindsay Fox from Hawaii. Well, Lindsay, it's now obvious that war has been declared. What's the next step to be taken by St Kilda? Well, I'm, I've always been a great one fighting fire with fire. I have uh, engaged two Queen's councils to review the situation uh, with Richmond and uh, try and ensure that uh, through the courts of Australia that we can do something about retaining Cox. Lindsay, tomorrow's match between Richmond and St Kilda is now developing into a real grand final. Well, it's one of those situations that uh, Richmond adopts an attitude of becoming what you classify as a pimp. I thought the people at Richmond were beyond that. Somebody to be the premiers of, uh, of our great game last year to resort to extortion approaches to try and take individuals out of a club that had a deficiency of just on a million dollars uh, I think it's as low as you can stoop. Cox was knocked out in the dying minutes of the game against Richmond and had to be helped from the field. It was a day that was built on pressure. Alex Jezelenko asked Cox, who won a Supreme Court injunction last night, to lead the Saints onto VFL Park against Richmond. Earlier in the day, St Kilda fans had rallied to his assistance. More than 1,000 names were added to a petition outside the ground. A large collection was taken up as a fighting fund to help keep the Saint Defender at Moorabbin. Cox had a tough day. He didn't play in his customary role at fullback. Instead, he was played on a back flank on ageing Tiger veteran Kevin Bartlett. He made mistakes in the first quarter under extreme duress. But St Kilda know what sort of a man he is and are desperate to keep him with at the club. To get back on his left boot again. Against Athlete. South Melbourne, Peter Bazusto ruled the skies, oh. taking a succession of screeners. Oh. Buckley again for Carlton. Screws it back towards the half forward position. Bazusto! Good kick into the goal square. Oh, there's Bazasta and what a mark! That's the third. And then three of them have been sensational. Not bad for a very ordinary play. I hope Jack Dyer watches the short pass. Into the and the ground goes. level, he was equally yeah, devastating, kicking eight goals in Carlton's 99-point landslide. Carroll fires at the goals. That could be another one. In the goal square is Peter McCrumble. Marks and puts it through. McConville finally becoming accurate. Looking for Mackay. Back it comes to McConville. He's out of the pack. Beautiful play as he ducks. A snap for goal. Look at this one. Good goal by McConville. A magnificent goal. The full forward position again. Carter's there for South Melbourne. Bazusto. He's already kicked seven goals. Can he make it eight? Snaps for goal. And he's put it through. Goal number eight. Peter Bazusto. Richmond's hope slump when it lost key forward David Cloak with a knee injury. So you'd be optimistic about coming back for the finals if Richmond do make the five? Yeah, well, if we make the five, I hope to be able to play the last couple of games of the year and then uh, play the finals. See on the centre is Richmond going to be suffered very, a demoralising loss to Collingwood in round ten, right but the Magpie skipper circles. Peter Moore, nothing seemed to go right. Moore and Lee. Neither can take the mark. Backing up well as Roberts, and he's Moore's down at the moment. That's bad news for Collingwood. Kickers around towards Moore and Lee. 
Oh, oh, hit more in the eye, that ball. Oh, I think uh, Lee might have got him no, on, but... on the side of the face. Moore in front. Oh, got one on the nose again. He's had a couple of knocks today, Peter Moore. But centre of the ground, tries to get it down. Collingwood got down to the Dacos football side there. of things, yeah, though. They ball found ball a match winner in Dacos. Peter Dacos. Dacos kicked nine, and the Magpies won by 49 points to push Richmond out of the five. It's half forward. Here goes Craig Davis racing goalwards. Long handball into the goal square on his own is Brewer and puts it through for another one of the board. There's Weirmouth. We'll look for the handball over to Dacos. Goal number seven. If he can kick it, he couldn't. He got a push in the back. Roach is down there, a real stack up the Bellamy. Now Dacos has it again. Steps for goal and has put it through. Goal number seven. Looking forward like a rugby player. Here he goes with a long handball. Up towards Kevin Morris in the full forward position. Morris steadies, hand pass into the goals. Brewer, two feet out, puts it through for four points. Oh, Roach is there, missed the mark. Goal number nine to Dacos. Sorry, can he make it ten? Peter Dacos, goal number nine. The heavy ground set the scene for some of the VFL's heavyweights. When Carlton went down to the new glamour team Essendon in a fiery encounter, it was again Ronnie Andrews in the thick of things. Here goes Andrews out of the pack. Another one goes down. Andrews is all fit and fire today. My word. In these cold conditions, that ear will be very sore, Jack. Uh, I couldn't quite pick up who that was. The ball comes down to Clark. Who's... So it's a little Bahaja. And big Fitzpatrick. Look at the size of Bahaja, and Fitzpatrick's about a foot taller than him. He's a bit frustrated with this passage of football. There's a chance for Schultz to score. He's on the left foot. The goals are open. The kick travelling. Is it through or not? The crowd says it is. In fact, that last one that was Kerry Good Kerry kicked Good. nine for North as the Ruse lifts Melbourne at VFL Park by a record 129 points. Yes. It was a particularly oh, galling loss for the Demons Second coach Ron Barassi in his first season away from Arden Street. Short stab drop, hunted the ball, in fact, just straight through. Rod Lewis waiting for the ball to be shot out. Has the Troy went on a rampage he after half time to keep their finals hopes alive, the kicking 18 goals to three goal against Footscray at, at the junction over. The top. And it's a goal! Point and traps it beautifully, a hand pass to Parrish, 20 metres out, Parrish fires at the goals, and I think he's offline, is it? No, Lamar, he's caught a beautiful hand pass over the top to Poynton, Poynton back to Manane, Manane over to Merrigan, Merrigan in the open goal for his fifth goal. <laughs> Nearly a quarter of a million people saw the 11th round of matches, and at Prince's Park, they were treated to Kerry Good at his high-flying best. While Good provided the spectacle, it was Carlton who provided the fireworks, defeating North Melbourne by five goals and moving back into top spot on the ladder with play like this. Now it is a long kick at the back. Oh, nearly a mark to McCann. He said play on, it could be a goal. Yes. Yes, a goal kick by Pazasto, I would say. It was a McCoy. Perevic, great attempt to mark, but in comes the man of the match at the moment, Harms. Long hand pass to Perevic. Perevic over the top again to Ashman. Ashman back and turn to Francis. Great play from Carton. Francis steadies for goal, runs in, shoots it, puts it through. Magnificent play. And Francis capping off the good work of players downfield. Burns about to get another touch. It looked more like ringside with the wrestlers when St Kilda tangled with Fitzroy. The Saints had been stripped of their points after the Cox affair, but were back to their best against the Lions, winning by 40 points. For St Kilda, none played better than Trevor Barker. Comes back onto the left foot, well tackled, comes up the loose ball out to Dunn, Dunn with a long hand pass, Duperuzel in position. Across the ground, and Barker up to take the mark, can't quite take it, he's still trying to gather the ball in. Great play, Barker. Is he? Here's the pack, there's another chance here for St Kilda through Barker. Barker into the forward pocket, a chance, yes, and a good mark for taken by Hewitt. Quinlan sets himself off from Stone in front, and Barker. Barker slipped in there to take the mark. The ball taken away by Barker, and a well-placed kick finds the half-forward flank. Trevor Barker up high, a great mark by Barker. Period. Herbert Meanwhile, at the Herbert MCG, the Kevin Bartlett was becoming the first player to reach 350 goal. VFL what games against Melbourne. Second. What a snapshot that was! Little Kevin Bartlett struggled hard for his goals against Melbourne's Peter Giles, breaking free for this goal in the first quarter and then again in the second. As has happened so often, it was Bartlett who turned the tide, this time with a brilliant three-goal burst in the last quarter. Well, I think uh, three-quarter time, Tony asked all the boys for a, a big lift because uh, to lose today certainly would make our chances for 1981 very poor, you know, and uh, I think everyone went out with the... Uh, 
well, the ambition to do something in the last quarter. Could you feel your own um, personal confidence uh, rising in the last quarter when you started kicking those goals? Oh, yes. I think that um, whenever you uh, read the pack and it comes off and you happen to kick a goal, I think it lifts your confidence and hopefully it lifts the side's confidence. You've been asked many times as you've reached uh, every milestone in your career, what does, what does something like a 350th game mean to you? Well, it means for a start that I'm still playing <laughs> and uh, that's what I want to do is to uh, play for as long as I possibly can and uh, I hope to be part of Richmond sides uh, this year and uh, hopefully next year. And on the and same day, Alistair Patterson saw out. a mammoth crowd at VFL Park for the Hawthorne Collingwood clash. There's a runaway record crowd at VFL Park. 92,935 fans joined today's crush and for those who arrived after 2.15, it was too bad. The gates had to be closed. Gate takings for the day soared to nearly $215,000. It was the second highest recorded crowd at a home and away game, beaten only by the MCG with 96,000. Some angry fans who arrived at the ground and found they could not see the play demanded their money back and it's understood money was refunded. Police say that today's crowd caused the worst traffic chaos in the ground's 12-year history. In fact, at one stage, an exit ramp from the Mulgrave Freeway had to be closed during the big choke. It's the second time Collingwood has lost at VFL Park this year, the last time against Essendon, also in front of a record crowd. At one stage, it looked more like Ronnie Andrews versus North rather than the Bombers versus the Roos. He'll take a free kick at the bat. Ronnie doesn't pull any punches. He lets everyone know about him. What? Right on his hammer. Oh, Clark shirt front of him. Uh, absolutely superbly. Good handball again. Nagel got one for his corner. Wilson Reeves comes out and actually hit him on hit the head that time. Hit him on the head, that's right. And the umpire said that Shaw punched and pushed him <laughs> in the back. So how lucky can you be? <laughs> now it's Terry Danaher, but oh, Andrews could be goal number three coming up. The big fella can get rid of it. He's going for the shot now. He fires. He's put it through. What an effort he made of that. Full forward looking for Reeves and points. Oh, there was a mark and a half. But... Oh, Blake, what a magnificent mark. And fires for the goals. Malcolm Blake's got it. And Malcolm Blake's kicked five goals, going for goal number six. At the point of the square. Now he's off. And well off. And he's full ten metres and shoots at goal. That could be close. It is a goal. He wins it with a mammoth punch up towards full forward. Burdett to Timmy Watson. Here's a goal coming up to Watson. Fires and puts it through. Then her goes after it again, back to Carey. Carey doesn't know what to do with his clear now. He'll snap for the goals, and he's put it through for a goal. Well, there we go. Uh, Carey coming up there to score that goal. One on behind the play. Round 12, Hawthorne's there. Lethal Lee found himself on a striking charge well, after this melee. He was later let off. Well, when the Blues well settled down, the they played dazzling football and defeated their co tenants at Princes Park by 39 points. He straightens up, goes for the short pass over the top, finds McConville and a beautiful goal. What for Richmond veteran Francis Burke, it was a day of celebrations. 45 metres out from goal now, puts it on its way to another goal. Oh, I was a bit nervous, Peter. Uh, everyone wished me well. It felt a little bit like my first game, actually. and. Uh, and of course, uh, there was the worry of the actual game itself because it would have been a terrible dampener on uh, everything if we had been beaten. But uh, the boys came from behind terrifically well in the last quarter and uh, it's really capped it off. So uh, we're really pleased and I'm really thrilled. And what about that third quarter when South Melbourne got the run on and John Roberts was yes. uh, creating a few problems for <laughs> you? Uh, How was it? He's a good player, John Roberts. And just, uh, as you say, for, the, for a little while there, he just got on top of me and uh, completely beat me with good play. After lengthy negotiations during the past few days between officials from Geelong and East Fremantle, Peak was last night leased to the Cats for the remainder of this season. After flying in from Perth, he was taken to a nearby helicopter for a rush trip to Cadinia Park, where he had a light training run with his new teammates. He told Alistair Patterson he was delighted, at long last, to be a cat. Feels great and I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to said day. Did the criticism levelled at you by uh, Barry Cable in a recent newspaper article help you finally make up your mind or...? Uh... Or what? Actually, I don't read many papers. Uh, it was my own doing, and on the good wishes of the club and myself, we come to an agreement that will benefit the club and myself and Geelong, hopefully. Peak made his debut against North Melbourne and immediately repaid his first instalment. Four points, Peak's first goal in league football. He's playing good football here, and a good shepherd. Allows Malarkey to find Terry Bright. The ball may have been out of bounds. No, it wasn't. The short pass comes from the boot of Bright. 
up toward Turner. Turner has a chance, 20 metres out from goal, and another Geelong goal has come up as Turner kicks his second goal. The Packy going out towards Reynoldson, who's opposed to Golding. Reynoldson picking up, walking around nicely. A shot for goal by Reynoldson is on. Would it get there or not? Yes, it has. Good goal, kicked by Reynoldson. His first kick for the day. The distance, Justin Madden. The seesawing game at Windy Hill saw Essendon snatch their seventh victory in a row against Tony Jewell's hapless Tigers. It wasn't until two minutes into time on that Graham Schultz put the Bombers in front. What a tall timber out here. Madden shoots at goal. Goal umpire hasn't moved. Goal here would really liven this match right up. Michael Thompson fires. That looks pretty good. Essendon are back in it. There's a go now for Watson, and look at him go. He kicks the ball high, doesn't gather much distance. Andrews comes in, flies, grabbed by Terry Danaher. He's grabbed, he straightens up, fires. There's a go now. And he's got the mark, Watson. And can this fellow be a match winner? A lot resting on his broad shoulders at the moment. And we're about 15 and a half minutes into this last quarter. He fires, and that's a goal, I would say. Ball hooked back there towards centre-half forward. Neil Danaher coming in for the mark. He's got it. He's been shifted down to that forward line. They're packing that forward line with their high marks at the moment. Danaher, the straight on this uh, half-back flanker. As he fires, the kick is a good one. Is it coming around enough? It might be a goal. A goal to the down there with the, crowd the coach Kevin up. Cheedy, the joy of getting his side into the five, may have been offset by this reception after the game. He's done a marvellous job. Carlson short, could be dangerous. Wayne Harms must surely get the nod for the most spectacular, if not the most painful crash landing of 1981. And the Blues were to continue to crash. With Bernie Quinlan in command, the Lions were at their best, recording a four-goal win and knocking the Blues from the top of the ladder. Breaks away, has a bounce, he'll kick this long note out to the goal square, the torpedo punt, it's a mammoth kick, what a kick that was, whoa, great kick there by Bertie Quinlan, well played Phil Mayland, he has his handball partly smothered, Carlson going through strongly, gets away, uses his pace, onto the left boot, he goes long, and I think it looks good. What and a goal. goal on the board. Look, caught behind once again, but chipping it in front. Geez, a good player, Manet, and he plays on. He's given it to Rendell on his own in the goal square. Into the open goal. Oh, he could have nearly been caught, but he's put it through. In towards full forward. Quinlan unable to control it. But has a hurried snap. And goals. That's what they want. A Braddy. Sets up the handball to Conlon. Here goes the pace of Conlon. He steadies. Shoots at goal. And puts it through. Glascott and Carlson to do battle here. Plenty of pace with these two. Look at that beautiful snare from Carlson. Gets round onto the left boot. Long in towards full forward. A magnificent ah. kick from Carlson. And if that one won't inspire Fitzroy, nothing will. In goes Conlon. He's caught. Look for the free kick. Play on is the call. Quinlan. Dummies. Shreds a tackle. Kicks towards goal. He made no mistake. Oh, a magnificent goal. 1979, Brownlow medalist Peter Moore had his number taken after a fiery exchange with St Kilda Ruckman Jeff Saru at Victoria Park. Fortunately for the Magpies captain and key Ruckman, the charge was not sustained by the VFL Tribunal the following Monday night and he was free to lead Collingwood towards the finals. Kevin Bartlett, Richmond's ageing veteran, continued on his goal-kicking way in season 1981, but occasionally things didn't go according to plan, as Jimmy Jess tried desperately to point out. In the 14th round, the Tigers showed just too much class for the fading Kangaroos, and they had goal-kickers galore. who flies in the middle of the pack, can't complete the mark. In comes Bartlett, more danger for the Kangaroos here. He's looked for Wiley, superb pass from Bartlett. Wiley plays on, shoots for goal from 25 metres out. And make no mistake, that's another one to Richmond. And although Wiley kicked the goal, he could almost give it to Kevin Bartlett. The Whiteman coming across his hand short, the little Whiteman takes the mark. He doesn't wait for him to get up. And this little clever rover moves away. He'll either have a shot or go for a pass. He's looking for Jimmy Jess. It's not a bad shot, but... 
Spencer, one over here to McCann. This the North could coach, be a coach Malcolm, Malcolm Blight, this was probably, probably the most embarrassing Blight. moments of he's his football the... career. I think he might have put that through for a point. He's run the wrong way. Oh. It's unbelievable. He thought that was the goals. He really still thinks it now. Look, <laughs> it is unbelievable because I, I was dumbfounded myself. The goal square, Bartlett's there. The Tigers would have moved back within striking distance of the five with a seven-goal win in the heavy conditions. Waitman's 20 metres out. Now he'll go for a shot at goal. Gets around. No, he won't. He gives it to Martello. First goal for the Tigers to Alan Martello. Big out. Going long when South played host to Fitzroy, Bernie Quinlan came close to losing his head. Quinlan got tackled and just about had his head. Bernie recovered, and so too did Fitzroy to win by 23 points. Rendell can't get the kick in a chance for a left foot by... Forward, Rendell almost held that one to ground. Parrish, right foot snap this time. He used the left last time, and he's put it straight through the middle. 15 metre penalty. League football returned to Brisbane after 30 years, and Essendon's Roddy Andrews was promptly reported to striking Hawthorne Bertie Di Pier Domenico. He was suspended for four matches. Although conceding quite a few inches to uh, Simon Madden. Oh, Hawthorne there's players. one down. And he's reported, I would say. Ronnie Andrews dropped him like a sack of spuds. He's and got him, uh, all right. he's got him. You're gone this time, Ronnie boy. He got DP at a Oh, right in the mouth. Right in the mouth. I tell you what, if I was going to pick on a Hawthorne player to biff, I'd biff somebody else. Couldn't pick it up. Thompson gets 20,000 Queenslanders saw Essendon continue its winning streak and, and then saw Norm Goss up. reported for striking Andrews. Oh, there's someone down. That's Andrews. Is that the square off? That might have been, but uh, takes a while. The umpire's found a free kick. Goss is he's, gone, is he? Yep. He's got Goss. Yes, he's busy taken. Night, isn't Goss it? is. Uh, no, that's Andrews and Goss reported here today, and Andrews gets the free kick. But I think Ronnie, even though he's rubbing his head, he's got a concrete head. It won't hurt that. The era ended when 300 game veteran Francis Burke called it a day. Something that has been uh, as good to me as football has, and uh, from that point of view, it was. It was uh, difficult. Have you given thought to perhaps carrying on at all, giving support and experience to the reserve side? Oh, not really. I suppose uh, one of the reasons why I've decided to call it uh, quit, Sandy, is that I didn't really fancy playing the seconds. A little too early in the morning. <laughs> yes, I'm not used to getting out of bed early on Saturday mornings, but uh, I just think that I would like to stay involved uh, in some way, shape or form, and um, on, on, although I will wait for the dust to settle. Though he's clearing a spot there, trying to find the Only 48,000 people yeah, braved the raid well, and bitter cold to see the split round encounters. When the two big improvers of 1981 clashed, it was to be Essendon's day with the Bombers defeating Fitzroy by three goals. Fowler coming off the ground, so Serafini uh, may be coming off too. Alexander got that one, but Watson's in the way. Watson shows a lot of strength, the hand pass to Nagel, picks it up like he normally does today. You think it was a dry day for that guy, back to Watson, he's not having it too badly either. Out it goes now, a little Bahaja. Uh, he's going to have a running shot for goal. Let's see what he does when he's put it through. This so will be about two minutes of time on in this quarter. Back to Bahaja. Beautiful hand pass coming over there to Thompson. Back there to Timmy Watson. Could be a goal coming up. There's no doubt about that. And that's the second goal for Bombers. Thompson, oh, he cops Serafini right into the chin by accident that time. And down went Serafini. Got him with the shoulder. It's a good one. He's found uh, Serafini. Looks as though he's recovered okay. Goes for a pass. It's a beautiful pass. Davies. He gives the hand pass Hawthorne to skipper Lee Matthews has been one of the most adaptable players in the game for a decade, and he revelled in the slush, kicking three goals in the Hawks' win over North. Towards Robertson, but a poor hand pass. So it runs past, run past Robertson by a slipping and sliding. It comes back to Matthews. He has a kick towards goal. Full points. The Henderson now of North Melbourne can't take it cleanly. It's on the turf. Dempsey picked it up like a rover, but Tuck took it away. Tuck's left foot kick out to Matthews, unopposed. Dempsey's left hip. And Matthews led well to that pass from Tuck. Towards Fitzpatrick from At VFL Pasusco, Park, Rod Ashman showed the skills that put him in the lead of most media awards with a solo performance against St Kilda. Great play, Ashman. Ashman, oh, dodges cleverly, lines up from 40 metres out. He's put that one through the centre. A great goal. Well, has the ball fisted away. Barker goes in strongly with Bazasto. And Barker wins out. A limping Trevor Barker too. Forced to get the handball away is Trevor Barker. The Saints, things looked dismal when star Trevor Barker had to be carried from the field. Jess, one hand the umpires came in for their share of criticism after the Richmond Geelong match. Jimmy Jess and Michael Roach seemed to have plenty to say. Jess going crooked, the umpire. And again, Gary Malarkey 
maybe luckily he has come out of it with the free kick. He goes for the mark. He's got the grab again. Now he said play on. Oh. Well, I'd go along with that. I think the big fella in front may have touched it. He's still not happy about it, but Roach still arguing with umpire Robinson. And Jess going over. He said, well, that's the second one, the one I missed out on too. So Jess said something to umpire Robinson. He's going back to have a chat to him. And at the MCG, Tiger Croswell celebrated his 200th BFL game as only Brent could. Again, up towards Byrne. He gets a shocking bounce. Here's an opportunity now for Melbourne if they can set up some shepherding. An easy chance for them to go forward through Elshaw, but in the meantime, the whistle has sounded. And Croswell is not happy. Cost them a goal. It has cost them a goal. Forward once again through Healy. The half forward. Goes back towards half forward once again. Chance for Croswell. In towards goal. He's made no mistake this time. Make the margin six to Jackson. Oh, Jacko is not happy. Well, he's silly. He might take it off him. But I hope he doesn't take it off him there because... Uh, Trying to come out the back door with it. Gets caught. Morris goes to ground. Heavy body work as Williams cops a beauty. And here comes Jacko. Whoa! <laughs> I haven't seen a man. Look could... at Jacko. Oh, here he comes. Just over 42,000 people saw Essendon continue to dominate the competition and beat Carlton in the final of the $450,000 Escort Championships under lights at VFL Park. Wilson turned to Folds. Folds from right half forward flank has a flying shot up towards full forward. Vandahar and Madden fly. Snapshot for goal by Watson. Goal! Folds, one of Essendon's best. Long kick from Folds. Hawker on the run. Over towards Danaher. He can goal from there and he's done it. As captain, I'm very thrilled. And it was a very proud Simon Matten who accepted the it's cup. It's been a very big team effort. Tonight we had the 20 players on the field. But also goes to the 16 players who have played in the Escort Cups and did not represent us tonight. Also to the coach, Kevin Sheedy, who has put in a lot of work. When Collingwood met Carlton the second time around, there was to be only one kick in it. And again, the Magpies were triumphant, but only by a solitary point. Peter Dacos kick. kicked three goals in four minutes and set the stage for a couple of the disputed marks of the season. I thought so too. That might be over the boundary line. We'll wait and see. Or is it a point? It's a point, I think. It's a point. So that makes the difference now. Two points in favour of the Magpies. Kick up to all After a gloomy winter, the sun came out. And so too did Michael Roach with a nine-goal bag and a power of marks against Hawthorne. Picked up by Jimmy Jess in his 100th performance. Give it a rope and it's through. It's a goal. A few moments ago. High kick from Waitman. Roach. Beautiful mark over the top. Elvin Moore's there, so was Roach. Roach goes into the open goal. It's a goal. Kicked by Michael Roach. Yes, Richmond back in front. Could be eight straight. Roach. Look at that. Well, this will be a goal. Not a bad mark. Oh, what a ripper. Geelong's Peter Featherby gathered 43 kicks against Melbourne in one of the outstanding individual performances of the season. Unfortunately, Geelong's kicking saw the Cats finish with 22 goals, 35 behinds, but still be victorious by 88 points. Not runs though, going past nicely. Featherby lines up 15 metres out, and there is goal number three. Hand passes over to Featherby again. Featherby goes for a bit of a run. And he's had the ball on a string today, lining up the goals from about 35 metres out. But will win out. That's Jeffries. Jeffries spears the ball further afield. Featherby lines up. That's pretty close. And Featherby, he can amend that. He now has kicked four goals like his winger, Whitcomb. Neil's kicked a goal, lines up with the left boot. On the eve of the 17th round, Johnson North Melbourne coach Featherby. Malcolm Blight made this announcement. The simple fact is that I'm convinced, absolutely convinced, that the day of the playing coach in the VFL is over. Blight will continue as a player at North and admitted he'd had difficulties combining his playing and coaching roles. I guess if you look yourself in the mirror and say on the scoreboard uh, as a coach for 16 games, you know, I've been a failure. Um, 
and that hurts. I mean, that hurts deep down. But you know, it's always said that the club's bigger than the individual, and uh, you know, I made the decision on my own, and, um, and so you know, I stand by that. Uh, just hopefully now that we can get back on the right crew. Barry Cable met the North Committee for two hours this morning before accepting the position, and his first priority will be to work out what has gone wrong with the ruse. Well, at the moment I've uh, been uh, contracted to coach the North Melbourne Football Club, and so as from now I'm coach of the club. Uh, with the burden of coaching lifted, Blight responded with a club record 11 goals against Footscray. Blight, he snaps at the goals, is it true? Yes! By Hodgman towards Blight, can he trap it? Goes in after it, still got it. Blight runs around into the open goal, fires it back at the goals. Is it true? It is. For Spencer as he gives it out to his teammate there in Reeves. Over to Blight, a chance for Blight. He snaps around, he hooks at the goals. Is it true? Yes. Still possession, a chip now to Blight. He's kicked six. Here's number seven. No mistake about it. The opportunity now for 11. Well, someone said in the paper, will he do an Ian both? And well, he has certainly done that. Yes, no question of that. There's the drop punt. Looks pretty good off the boot. Straight through the middle, 11 goals to Malcolm Blight. The Richmond's hopes of making the finals received a severe setback when again it lost to Fitzroy. And again, it was a close finish. Just one point. Jess takes the ball right half forward, puts it high for Roach. Oh, look at this. It's a goal! What a goal! Most miraculous goals I've seen for many, many years, Peter. Unbelievable goal. Pass over to Condon. He was a beautiful player for two quarters and a pass oh. over to Bernie Quinlan. And super boot over there to Randall. It's a goal for sure. Good play by Bernie Quinlan. Smith going and he's grabbed by Bartlett. Umpire said, what is it? Holding the man. And listen to those Tiger fans go crook. And Bartlett demonstrating there with the umpire. They're not coming it too sweet at the moment, the reigning champs. I think the free kick was there. Serafini. Serafini at centre field, handball over the top to McMahon. Can he make it another one for Rich for the tie for the Lions? He's done it. Rich, oh, the goal umpire's been flattened. Did he see it? Oh, yes, a goal. Five goals to David McMahon. I tell you what, if we'd have put up a point there, oh. they'd have slaughtered it. Conville, a hand pass coming. First Saturday there, in August saw Carlton and Geelong yes. battling cold. Blustery weather at Prince's Park. The Blues have recruited well, and they signed Sandgropers Peter Bazasto and Ken Hunter, and again the West Australian pair repaid Carlton's faith. Malaki goes for the hand pass. Oh, this is dangerous. Here's a go now for McConville. He'll have to fall over to miss this. Goal. What a bad mistake on the part of Malaki that time. And a bad fumble by Ian Nankerb. Set a field. Ah, oh, taken away from Bright beautifully by Hunter. A long kick. Bruce Nankerb, a long kick up there. Ah, uh, Hunter, what a great mark. Oh. Hunter, one of the best on the ground. Look at that for a mark. What a magnificent mark. Look it goes. Oh, look at that, Hunter. What a mark. That's three's taking distance. Oh, there's a beautiful mark there to Hunter. Haven't been into attack yet this quarter. Wells has kicked sailing goalwards into... Oh, look at the sister. Mark of the year. <laughs> what a beauty. What a great mark that was. And very close to mark of the year. He soared above the pack. Oh. Goodness me. Blake goes for the punch. It hits the deck. Bazasto again. This could be a goal coming up. He's put it through for a goal. Goal number three. And look at him. He's saying, I'm the champ. I'm the greatest. And by golly, believe you me, he'll say it to you too. By Lewis, a the fight for, for fifth spot revolved around three teams. The Richmond, Hawthorne and Fitzroy That's vying for one finals berth. Fitzroy moved back into the five on August the 1st with the gutsy last quarter fight back against the wind, beating the Hawks by two goals. Pack up. O'Halloran got the punch down. It was a charge for McMahon. A hand pass from Quinlan missed McMahon. Picked up by Poynton. This will be a good shot if he gets it. I tell you what. That's a goal. One of the ugliest scenes of the year erupted at the MCG when South Melbourne and Melbourne met head on. Both Brent Croswell and South's David Rhys Jones were to receive four week suspensions after being found guilty on striking charges. South officials lodged a complaint with the VFL reporting Melbourne writer Peter Smith for misconduct after an incident allegedly involving Rhys Jones, but the matter was subsequently dropped.
The next day, August the 2nd, Sunday football came to Melbourne when Collingwood and Essendon met before 64,000 people. Stephen Phillips made this report for Seven National News. VFL President Dr Alan Arnott was ecstatic with the results of today's match. Well, undoubtedly it's a huge success, uh, Stephen, yes. It, it, you know, very, very satisfying and it showed that all of the efforts and endeavours over the last three or four years has uh, certainly proven to be worthwhile. Looking around the ground, the most pleasing aspect would surely be the picnic-type atmosphere. Yes, I, as a matter of fact, I was just in the last ten minutes watching the crowd in the outer and uh, the number of uh, younger children and uh, that are with their parents in the outer and uh, you know, the orderly manner in which the crowd is uh, reacting to the game is, is just a real plus. <laughs> The crux of the dispute is it's not more money, it's not conditions, it's not Harry Beitzel. The crux of the matter is that they want to be, the umpires want to have their association negotiate on their behalf. That is a trade union type of situation. And who does? Andrew, what's the situation with this breach of contract question? Well, the situation is that the league have uh, advised each and every umpire uh, per phone that is Jack Hamilton and other members of the office staff have contacted him on the each umpire on the phone and said that they consider that they're in breach of contract and for instance Jim Chapman was singled out as one who would definitely be sued by the VFL. Could you see what? it escalating? Oh, I think there's every possibility of that. The VFL will be left without any umpires whatsoever. While the senior umpires spent the day discussing legal tactics, replacements had to be found. In the match between Collingwood and North, the umpires were 20-year-olds Mike Snedden and Paul Saville. Waiting for the ball to come down. It so does. 12 young rookie high umpires high took on the responsibilities of a vital VFL round. At Victoria back. Park, Malcolm Black continued to find the goals, but to no avail. Collingwood's headlong on, charge at the top position the on the ladder continued. I think it's through, it's a goal to Collingwood. Glenn Denning puts a ball down. Good piece of roving by Ray Shaw. Goes towards goal, it bounces truly. Lovely goal, not forward zone. Or Barron missed an easy one. Took his eye off it, I thought. Kink came through, trying to show a little bit of strength. The kick by Barham along the ground. Bounced over the head of everybody. And through for a Collingwood goal. Well, that was a real bounce of that one. Barham kicks his second goal. And the scores tighten up. Any player like Williams, if you try as hard as that, these uh, conditions, uh, certainly the flashiness goes out of the game and there's no flashiness about uh, Williams as Ray Shaw, after taking it from Peter Moore, got the ball across now. A beautiful kick from Graham Allen, might be touched on the line or not, it's full points. A great goal to Collingwood's Graham Allen. For Richmond, the hardest thing about the game at Moravan was getting onto the ground. Good kick, almost to the square. Politic can't control it. Picked up by Barker. A step by Barker. He's put it through. Oh, what a miraculous goal. Grant Thomas, in fact, that doesn't favour him in the end. Here's a chance for Sarah. A hand pass over the top to Bartlett. The bounce favours him into the open goal. Goes Bartlett. It's a goal to the Tigers. A half four line over the head. And one of the controversial incidents of 1981, Jim Jess downs and killed as Peter Brown. Jess wasn't reported by the umpires, but the Saints did lodge a report with the VFL. Jess was exonerated. He has played a great game of fullback. Oh, wait. Play on Zip Match ended sensationally when Paul Serra was awarded a free kick right on the final side. Will fire for goal from about 25 metres out, 45 degree angle. The scores are dead set level. And is that the siren? The siren has sounded. The pressure is on Paul Serra. All he has to do is score a point to win the game for the Tigers and the crowd are out on the ground. All he needs is a solitary behind. He kicks, he's pulled through. A goal to Paul Serra. In the goal, Jeffrey's behind. In the 19th round, Fitzroy suffered a final setback when they lost to Geelong. The Lions couldn't cover Paul Jeffries, who kicked four of the Cats' 11 goals and they slipped from the five. Many judges field. expected that to be the last of Robert no, Walsney's ball. Rocks it to the open goal, fires and puts it through for his first goal. Drops the ball, but the umpire called plan as Ian Nankervis goes for pass. The Neil found him. Neil Nolan on the mark, plays on a left foot snap for goal. Oh, it bounces the wrong way. It could be a goal here for Jeffries. He has got it. Yes, goal number four. Three over to Mark Azar. Another one back to Buckley. After 14 wins in succession, it seemed that Kevin Sheedy's dream run had come to an end against Carlton in round 20. With less than 10 minutes to go, Essendon trailed by more than four goals. 
decision is going to take plenty of time. A wasting time decision went against Under Mike Fitzpatrick and a complete the transformation the then took place. He's taking it off, he's been wasting time. Oh, oh, well, you can do that, yes. Plenty of uh, Carlton defenders there. Oh, there's plenty of... Match winner for the Bombers in time on was the versatile Neil Danaher. He kicks this, you can see the goals there on the screen. He puts this through, it's only five points the difference. So it's five points the difference, never runs the ball. Taps it on, he's got it, and the Bombers back into attack again. Up she goes to Danaher, he's got it! Oh, the Bombers It could be the dress rehearsal for the grand final of 1981 as Neil Danaher comes in for the kick that could possibly win the game. And he's put it to him, the Bombers have hit the front. He's normally a good kick. Richmond's kicking and a little bit of luck went against the Tigers when they met Collingwood. This runs up very high, would it carry? No, not quite, or did it? The umpires confer, what is it? What is it? Let us know, let us know, let us know. Big conflict going on. It is a mark to Stewart right on the goal line. So Richmond for that close to a goal there, but it's been taken away from them now. And he shores, high kick over the shoulder. Kick coming up, plus a beautiful mark to kick. When a kick in front, if he kicks a goal, five points it'll be. And if he kicks one point, scores will be limp. When a kick with Collingwood's future in his boot, present. They say future, I'm talking their place in the five. It's through. Collingwood in front by five points. This boundary throw in. Been punched out by range. There's a chance now. In the and end, it was Terry Smith running into goal to win the match for Richmond and producing the out. miss of the year. And, is saying, what are you doing? and a great tribute to Don Scott of Hawthorne. A long, hard road for this giant ruckman, but 300 games and. He's been a bit of an enigma around the club, Peter, but a magnificent performance. He has time to pick it up and kick. And the big fellow Early celebrated goals. by being part of a winning side against St Kilda at VFL Park. Scott, it was a win to push the Hawks the back two. into the five. Kennedy. A hurried kick in towards full forward, fisted away from Davies. Heavy body work as Wallace picks it up. Good work by Ablett. The kick by Wallace is good. I am considering On World of Sport the next day, the South season. Coach and Triple Bradley medalist Ian Stewart made well, this announcement. I've coached South for five years and uh, most coaches at some stage um, have nothing, or run their race as far as uh, output goes and, and there is a possibility that I have ran my race as a coach. As I said, I've coached for five years and uh, can only coached for so long. Ian, is your decision influenced by the current internal bickering at South and the possible move to Sydney? Now, I've been a strong advocate for the move to Sydney because without that, South has no chance whatsoever. No, that has nothing to do with it. Uh, uh, I support the present uh, board and administration 100%, which I've said publicly before, before now. So, Ian, is that the end of a distinguished VFL career? Any further ambitions to coach? At this stage, no, when I say at this stage, no, Peter. Uh, as I said, I think that my contribution to football as a coach uh, you know, is sort of fast coming to an end. <laughs> A massive win by Collingwood over Hawthorne had left the Magpies on top of the ladder after round 21. It was a 73-point victory and premiership talk was all the rage at Victoria Park. And that was a magnificent kick and the Magpies in front. Hey, King. Has a bit of fancy footwork, runs into trouble, a hand pass out wide to Stan Magro. Knights and Kink. Kink's an improved player this week. Really finding form at the right end of the season. Look at the Hulk go. What a percentage player he is. Took water time. Rene Kink and, oh, there's a beautiful mark over the top of Knights. He's played a great second half, this bloke. Drops the ball short and a beautiful pass there to Wilson. He's across. They all miss as a go for Rene Kink running to an open goal. He won't miss this. Takes his time. And another goal to Collingwood and goal number two to Kink. Taps it on out there towards Banks. Down goes Knights. He got one right in the face from Banks. Well, we see Knights still down. Got there in time. It was While Collingwood held, was on the possession. rampage, Carlton didn't look quite kick. that impressive, yet still managed to beat here. North by 22 and points out of VFL Park. Zusto on top, trying for a fall. I don't know whether he's going to get it or not. To Brightus, who got a quick hand pass in. Two North Norman players collide. Oh, looking for Kerry Good. But it can't take the mark. Could get the boot. We couldn't do that either. McClure will take it. Fine, force it through. Ah, uh, Sherwood Bush. The umpire said no. 
Bill must have had his hand on the ball when it was kicked. Oh, gee, that was close. Very close indeed. Wayne Harms leads in the race for the ball, taps it towards goal. And great play by Harms. Piece of soccer play by Vasasto comes around. take the mark. Nobody's been tapped through for one behind, I think. Reeves got the boot to it, or did he? Uh, it's the second one, North Melbourne have tried four off the ground, and the second time they've been disappointed. And that looked pretty close. The moment, knocked down by Martello. The following week, Carlton ended it's Richmond's away, finals hopes. The Tigers had won the flag in 1980 and would have slumped to seventh place this season. It's a goal. As it goes out towards Bazasto, who kicked two goals in the first term. Chased by Wiley. Goes to Sheldon. Oh, Sheldon over in the practice wicket area. Now he gets his kick in, albeit a high one, down towards full forward. Looking for Mackay. Couldn't take it. Here's a chance for a Carlton goal. Snapshot by uh, Johnson is OK, and he's put it through for four points. Coming in to help him now is Mark Goo. A beautiful pick-up, a running shot for goal. It's not bad. It's a goal. Great goal. Great goal. Again, then there'll be a throw in. Pazasto hit his head right on the point post. And, uh, and if there was a personality in VFL football this year, it had to be that wooden spoon whacker, Jacker. This cameo performance typified Mark Jackson's game against Kelvin Moore of Hawthorne. <laughs> That's it, Jacko. Pass on the message. <laughs> what a character. <laughs> what a character. You're a one man man down there. Oh! A one-man show down there. He's as happy as Larry. Kicked his first goal, and he is told about 15,000 people in no uncertain manner. <laughs> oh, oh dear! Lines up the drop punt. That's close. Oh, Jacko knocked the goal umpire down. <laughs> Essendon's and rut of wins came to a halt in the slush at VFL Park. After 15 straight victories, it was DeLong who finally stopped the bombs. Touched! Well, not a goal. From Schultz, must at first on the scene. Gathers it well, put one a little high for Bright. Oh, held it too long. Oh, hey. He had the chance for a hand pass too, Jack. It's got the ball to boot very quickly, and it's been pushed through. Oh, has it? Oh, that's bad football! That's bad football! That's a goal! His second goal! Towards half forward, McMahon can't Fitzroy had made the finals in 1960, 1979, and now, with this impressive 26-point win over the Magpies at Victoria Park, had made it three times in 21 years. And they did it in start. Dangerous in front of goal, a snap. A great snap by Bernie. He's done it. He kicks down, looking for Point, and Point a good play. Point and big. Oh, into the open goal goes Point, and he fires, and I think he's put it through. In towards Lewis, Pet the big fella picks it up beautifully. Goes goal. It's who's he got? Conlon into the open goal. Goal. Great play, Fitzroy and Colin. And one of the mainstays of the Fitzroy win was former captain We're Ronnie Alexander. To, uh, rely on anybody else getting beaten to get into the five. We've done it on our own backs. And uh, if you can beat Collingwood at Collingwood. In the mud. In the mud. There, we're supposed to be a dry weather side. They're supposed to be the wet weather side. Keeping in mind, it's the first time this year that Collingwood's been beaten here. I think if we can beat them here, we can certainly do well in the finals. Collingwood out here has been like a grand final for you this week, but nearly every match over the past month or so has been a grand final for Fitzroy. I think uh, it's nine out of 11 we've won now. And we could afford to drop one in about seven it was, and we dropped that one to Geelong, and everyone, as you say, has been to final, and we've lived up to the pressure pretty well. Well, you go into the uh, elimination final next week, a winning side, Essendon a losing side. Well, that's right. We, uh, we know what we can do. You've seen how we can play, and we intend to uh, play like that next week. These were the classical marks of 1981.
Essendon and Fitzroy were the big improvers of 1981 and it seemed only fitting that they should make the finals. The elimination final at VFL Park looked to be cutthroat in more ways than one. He's having the bounce. Three of them, in fact. Nobody tackling him back. Well sharked by Taylor, doing a great job in defence down there. Oh, superb spin out. Over towards Carson will go for the handball to Herbert. Here's Danger for Restman. Herbert straightens up and fires a goal. It's a long shot. Going close. To Schultz. Here's a chance for the Bombers. Schultz racing goalwards. Won't be picked up by Taylor. Fires a goal. Is that Great goal. A hand pass right across the face of goal. Ronnie Alexander oh. wouldn't touch it. He took it uh, the safe way out that time and tapped it through for a point. The hospital hand pass. Oh. Troy Gold, if it bounces OK, it does. The hand pass into the goal square to Alexander from Parrish, and he puts it through for four points. Fire says no free kick. Folds and right half forward, pursued by Clayton, but he's got more speed than the Fitzroy player. A oh. long shot at goal. Look at that one. The Bombers are coming back. It's another goal. Tapped it out. Still juggles the ball. Pushed out by Crow. Intercepted by Laurie. Taken up his boot. That time by Heard, running to an open goal. This could look dangerous, or it could be dangerous. And it's a goal, and the Bombers are back in business. In comes Bernie Quinn, and he can't pick it up. Randall gives a hand pass over to Parrish. A long hand pass to Wilson. He can't miss this. It's a goal to Fitzroy. Andrews trying to play the ball in front. Gets it cleverly to Heard. Heard snaps it goal. Into the goal square. Goes to three. Tomlin going to run into trouble. Gets a hand pass over to uh, Wilson. Wilson's clear. It's a left foot snap for goal. He's put it through. At the MCG, Geelong's John Mossop and Stephen Reynoldson turned on a power pack display of high marking as the Cats turned a huge deficit against Collingwood into a formidable win. Good mark behind it, the man on the mark, Billy Pickin, and Reynoldson would be a bit nervous, I would think. And the umpire said, he's got it. Present moment, 66 goals from a half forward line. A wonderful effort, and so too is that. A great mark by Stephen Reynoldson. Too. He didn't want it though. He kept going up toward the half forward zone. Mossop at the back is a good mark. Now Mossop is out 60 odd metres and putting the ball into the forward pocket. He kicks it very high. Moore set himself at Mossop over the top. That was a good mark. Wow, we. Now getting ready to come on the ground on interchange bench. Mossop can put Geelong within one goal of Colin. He has. Right through the centre. A high kick. Atkin in the front position, Mossop from behind. Oh, again, another good mark from Mossop. He's reading that beautifully down there. Mossop. Missed it, I think. No, he got it. Does, putting it up high. Oh, look at that. Look at that for a good grab. John Mossop. Oh, they'll make you mayor of Geelong tonight. Caps it forward again. Jeffries does likewise. Wonderful play as it comes to Featherby. Featherby going for the power. Beautiful pass. Hits the right right on the chest. He should get the ball moving in a hurry with Mossop in such great form. Reynoldson at the back. A lovely mark by Reynoldson. You'll see a lot more of this young player too in years to come. Reynoldson. Pickin has had two kicks for the game. Reynoldson has, has had a lot more. He's got another goal for Geelong. Blake from half back. Unbalanced. Went for a short pass in towards the centre. And it's coming forward now. Jack Hawkins in toward the forward zone at the back of the pack is Mossop. Can you get the boot to it? Yes, another goal to Mossop. He's sixth goal. I think the Cats will get their fur up. Long kick forward. It's off the hands of the pack. Guns roving well. Has time to steady. He's being told there that he's been steady and drive the long kick down. Naturally, of course, looking for Mossop at the back. Two tall for Peter McCormack. Over the top. We will certainly. Uh, After Terry Bright was fell behind play, incident, President uh, John Holt wanted VFL action. You'll be looking at replays of the incident. Well, no doubt that uh, as the weekend goes on, we'll give it full consideration of what, if in any action, we take. And what's the injury involved? Well, you know, I think you can see that if you just have a look at Terry's face. And, uh, uh, you know, I think it's it's obviously been caused by a fairly vicious, vicious whack. Will the club be meeting first thing in the morning about this? We'll be meeting tonight about it, Seville. The injury to Terry Bright, uh, is he likely to be out next week? Well, looking at him tonight, I would say he's certainly likely to be out. And to get the injury the way he did was certainly not football in my estimation. And uh, I suppose I shouldn't say much more than that. But certainly was, uh, you know, looked to me to be a king hit from behind. And just about anyone can do that. 
Collingwood should have had the first semi-final sewn up. Then the Magpies lost their advantage. And in one of the most thrilling matches of the year, the men from Victoria Park snatched the game in the time-on period with two goals to win by a point. That is a great goal. I think for Peter Moore, he sets himself. The ball comes to turf, a chance for Dacos at the back. The left foot snap, now he's got back to his right foot, balks the opposition, comes back onto his left foot, has a shot for goal, and that's a great goal. Good goal to Peter Dacos. Collingwood looking very good. The punch from the pack. Smith put it down again. Could favour Collingwood here, yes. Picked up by Craig Davis. He tries to get a shot toward goal. It's going through, I would think. Yes, the Collingwood fans say that's a goal to Craig Davis. A nice piece of work from the centre bounce. That got it down, and Davis did the rest. This is the target. He tapped the ball on. Didn't try and take it. Barham is the recipient. Barham on the left foot going goalward. That's a beautiful goal. It's off the side of the boot. It's over the boundary line, I'm sure, before it was marked by McMahon. Uh, oh, the umpires haven't paid it. Well, he's got a difficult shot, but let's say it might be a bonus. He's going to try and kick the ball around the corner. Is it a good goal or not? Yes, it's the ball on. Picked up by Parrish, a quick hand pass to McMahon, who fumbled it. Has time to straighten up and put the ball through, so McMahon's kicked two goals in a brief matter of moments. And pass went straight to Kink. Brewer comes out for Collingwood, gives it on to Ray Shaw. A chance of a goal coming up as if Shaw can kick truly, and that's exactly what he does. Parrish has a chance to pick up. Got through all right, the name can't get out of trouble. He does now, hooks it around. It's a goal! It's a goal to Fitzroy. Never within 15 metres of goal. It's on the turf, it's a shot for goal! McMahon, a beautiful kick, rolled perfectly. Grabbing it out of the pack is Lewis. Lewis now gives a hand pass across to McMahon. Another goal coming up as McMahon goes forward. His fourth. Taylor, not a good hand pass. Knocked out of the way by Manane, but snapped up there by Craig Davis. He shows a good turn of speed. Then steady, he'll have another bounce. Craig Davis really backing himself out. Good football by Davis as he puts the long kick towards centre-half forward. Renee, Renee kick out position on that occasion. Snapped up by Dacos. He goes towards goal. It's a beautiful kick by Dacos. And the margin now, only two points. And now, Dormos took the mark. It's called play on as Quinlan swoops on the ball. Goes towards goal. And there's another one from Quinlan. His second and Fitzroy back in front again. Gets a hand pass out towards Lewis. He's steady, he gives it across now, a chance of a goal as Laurie puts it forward, it's right through the centre, great play. It's a beautiful kick from Davis, right up to the goal square, players fly high, it's grabbed up over the shoulder, Curry would have hit the front, a beautiful goal by Russ Brewer, a great goal in fact, and it may be the match winner as Brewer kicks his third goal. Oh. Carlton had emerged as Premiership favourites, and after beating Geelong this day in the second semi-final at VFL Park, moved into the grand final for the second time in three years. Making position was Blake, one-handed, it comes down to Hunter. Hunter breaks clear, shoots at goal, score coming up for Carlton, but it's full points. Hunter bringing up his first goal. In goes Pazasto, good play up to Glasgow. He's running to an open goal, fires and Carlton have got a goal. That's Glasgow's first. Punched away again as the ball hits the deck, there's Sheldon. He and Peek have had a great battle. Down there towards uh, Mark Q and he's on it, could go through for a goal, yes it does. What a goal! That's goal number two to Sheldon. Unbelievable! <laughs> Unbelievable! It could be a free kick. Now the umpire says prior is two or two. He goes over. Man Curvis gets it out. Snap for goal by Johnson. It's a goal. That's goal number two. Kick that one actually down towards full four. Oh, Jeffrey Johnson got a mile in the air. Goes to Jeffries. Jeffries into the goal square. Reynoldson has put it through for Geelong's first goal. It's it off the ground towards Johnson. What a beautiful bit of play. A hand pass to Wells. Another one to Harms. A goal coming up, I would say, right through the middle. Harms' a second goal. And the Magpies swinging back into attack. And there's Barham getting in front of Whitcomb. Takes the, the preliminary mark. final was a low standard game. But even the best judges were surprised that Geelong, with its class and pace, could be beaten by Collingwood. Against Kemp. Oh, what a silly bit of play. The iron out runs. Superbly. Hit him with the, uh, the shoulder. Picken. Oh! A wrestle. And Picken is in a little bit of bother down there. But the mark is taken by Yates. Was it 10 metres? Oh! And the big fella, will he go for a run? He balks. Oh! oh he got one right across the face that time. The umpire called play on as Whitcomb drives the ball. Ball up there towards the full forward zone. Players a go for Dacos. Fires. It's a goal. 
And the ball finally picked up by Neil. Beautifully gathered in by Whitcomb. Over to Bruns. There's a chance for a Geelong score. A long shot looking there, but it's too long for Mossett. And it's through for a goal. Taylor does. Zane Taylor, who had a good first term here at VFL Park, clears it back towards centre field. Geelong are alight now. Bruns picks up the ball. Bruns in short towards half forward. Reynolds is there. Nobody's with him. Up it bounces into his arms. Into the goals. Mossop four points. Goes for the long boot up towards full forward. A chance for Dacos. Steps it goal and he's put it through. And the chance is for Renee Kink. Close to the boundary line. Kink gets it in front of Yates. Then he runs out of bounds. Long kick in towards the goals. What a oh, hammer oh, kick. Golly, what a goal. He's done it. And a great goal from Kink. For Mossop, I would say, a goal coming up the line. He's only got to pick it up and get around his opponent. He does a goal. So it's goal number three, and the Cats are in front again. But towards full forward at the back is Mossop, but he has it knocked away. Here's a chance for a goal coming in. Is Jeffrey's got no, no. It is a goal. Oh, interesting. Thought it might have been over the line, but the umpire says it's a goal. Tell you what, that is that close, Peter. Time for a pass to Mark to Jeffrey's out there. Is Cooper going to have a goal? Oh. Him? Oh, they go in very hard, Cooper and the Jeffrey, but Cooper went after him. And Neil, as he drives the ball up there, but there's the mark again to Cooper. And he's standing up like the rock of Gibraltar. Cooper's there for Collingwood. Fiji, what a nail-biting finish. After Williams got on top in the third, underneath is Cooper. Jaws does it again. What a game it is. Knocked out there by Blake. Uh, Kink fumbles, has a snapshot for goal. He's put it through for another amazing goal. Irwin now taking the free and looking up there for Dacos. He's got the mark in front of him, Nan Curvis. He's played on. Nan Curvis is with him. Dacos with the ball. Lost it and regained it. Shoots it goal and has put it through. Collingwood hit the lead. Four goals to Dacos. At Davis with the chance. Malarkey goes in there. So does Hawkins. Out comes Davis again. Can he go and make it seven points the difference? He has. Seven points the difference in the crowd at VFL Park has gone wild. On behalf of the Victorian Football League, I formally announce the winners of the 1981 Brownlow Medal. And it just does so happen that I have two Brownlow Medals with me tonight. But ladies and gentlemen, there are another, other, quite a few others down below as well. But anyhow, we do have two with us. And uh, I now, on behalf of the league, officially present, firstly, to Bernie Quinlan, the 1981 Brownlow Medal. And to Barry Round, again, the 1981 Brownlow Medal. Well, you couldn't get closer than a dead heat for the Brownlow Medal or a more fiercely contested final series than we were treated to in 1981. Today was the one day of the year. It was billed as the classic confrontation of football superpowers and what better way to end our review of the season than like this. Barry. Traps it well. Out to Stewart. Stewart in turn to Tony Shaw. The Magpies are alight. Here's Dacos. Snap for goal coming up. It's on target. Look at that for a goal. Goes after the ball again. In goes Dacos. Oh, beautiful play by Harms. He takes it away from the pack. He's breaking clear. Over the centre half. Four got a running shot for goal. This will be a long one. It's a beautiful goal by Wayne Harms. Great goal. Long towards half forward. Mackay flies. Ashman scouts well. 12 metres out and goals. Carlton hit the front. And that's the moment everybody waits for.